guys welcome back to the channel so today i'm going to be giving an update on the hermit crabs it's been a while since i've done an update on these guys so to recap i added this fern plant back here and there's this one here too this one is cupcake she had not a very good molting experience last time i think one of her eyes is too small kind of damaged looking and then on her big claw there's like a hole that got eaten away or something I'm trying to show you see like the end of her claw there it's a bit eaten away by something but yeah crabs are all alive and well and they're definitely really enjoying this new home of theirs it's not so new anymore but <laughs> So I have added a few new things since the last update on these crabs, which is really just a couple things. I bought this little lawn of this plastic grass type stuff, which is a different kind from this. I wanted a different kind, <laughs> so I put some around here and over here and of course up there and around this branch thing <laughs> and then the second thing is just these um, Indian almond leaves that the hermit crabs can eat and it's good for them and it adds a little more uh, natural look to it it's probably the only real thing in here <laughs> aside from the hermit crabs and the sand and also the water of course but everything else is pretty much artificial so I really love how this turned out I love all the different plants and colors. I also like how the green, the artificial green plants, it all just corresponds well with each other, so I'm really pleased about that. Oh, I guess I added another thing which isn't a decoration. A lot of you in my um, setting up video of this terrarium said, okay, not a lot of you, but some of you <laughs> said that it wasn't good to have a heat pad under the terrarium because it could burn them when they're underground. My response at the time being was that I was just gonna have it on a really low temp to where it wouldn't be too hot for them if they came near it. Problem was that it wasn't gonna be heating up the terrarium at all. I also replied saying that I didn't really have anywhere else to put a heat pad because this terrarium used to be in a closet and it was right up against the wall and it was really heavy as you can see. <laughs> it also had a background, cardboard background on the back there and a heat pad would only work on the back. <laughs> it couldn't be in the front, that would just be ugly. And the sides are mostly mesh there's only these like skinny glass pieces, which they don't make um, heat pads <laughs> this size. I mean, they probably do, but that wasn't going to be giving enough heat for them if I did get a heat pad that would fit this. <laughs> so now that I moved and have this terrarium in a different spot, it's not right up against the wall and the uh, background isn't up against the back panels. So I decided to go ahead and buy a new heat pad and put it on this back wall so there is a heat pad back there and the crabs have been snuggling up against it a lot <laughs> i like never see them because they're always back there it is definitely warm enough in the room but they just like to sleep over there during the day they probably come out at night i mean they are nocturnal so it's no cause for concern or anything the heat pad under here is still there because like if i took it off i would have I would just have to throw it away because you can't reattach a heat pad after attaching it. So I just left it there. Oh, and also in that setting up video, some of you uh, were concerned about the, the foam I put here. I did completely cover it in scotch tape so that the crabs wouldn't get to the foam very easily. But I did reinforce it some more by adding some plexiglass around it. And I figured that would be good enough to keep them away and the reason i had foam in there in the first place was because i did not have enough substrate to completely fill this up but the main reason was because i wasn't quite sure this terrarium would be strong enough to hold a ton of heavy damp sand slash dirt as well as this so i wanted to fill in a little bit by adding some foam and the crabs would have this whole 
square area to burrow down and this area would be covered by all this anyway so I figured they wouldn't be burrowing down here but when I moved and had to take this all out. I noticed the crabs were actually able to get through the plexiglass by breaking it up with their pincher. They're a lot stronger than they might seem. <laughs> I'm not sure if they ate any of it, but I didn't really see or find any fragments anywhere. I just found that one of the pieces of plexiglass was missing some chunks out of it. Anyway, after I noticed that, I wasn't gonna have plexiglass in there anymore, nor was I gonna have the foam in here anymore. I figured this terrarium was in fact going to be strong enough for this area and this area to be completely filled with sand. So basically what I was trying to get at is that I no longer have a piece of foam in here. They're able to burrow down in this area as well. So that's nice for them and a lot safer as well. <laughs> So to quickly go over the essentials my hermit crabs have, uh, this is their salt water pool for bathing if they want to. And one of my crabs did willingly go in there once. I watched and recorded the whole thing and it was kind of stressing me out a little bit. <laughs> but it was also really fascinating. The crab was just casually going in there, walking around. But after a few minutes, I'm like, okay, that's it. <laughs> I'm taking you out. I don't want you to drown. They do have plenty of places to climb out. It's surrounded by mesh. It has this uh, ramp here and also this to climb up on. So this waterfall is a filter. There are cartridges inside there and I do clean it once in a while. I also clean out the water now and again completely to give them fresh salt water. And then over here is their fresh water in this um, water dish slash hide. The opening is not tall enough for my large crabs so I do always have to dig in the ground a bit to uh, make it wider so they can actually go in there and in there is a cuddle bone for them to munch on you can see they've scraped at it a lot this gives them calcium which they need after molting especially because calcium will strengthen their new exoskeleton speaking of molting one of them is molting right now I believe she's underground somewhere under this. And the other four are over here somewhere. So I do give them food. <laughs> it's just not in here right now. I give it in the evening so they can eat it at night and then I take it out in the morning when they're not being active anymore. So lately I've been giving them chicken and carrots. They absolutely love carrots. Cooked carrots, raw carrots, baby carrots, big carrots, they love it. And their poop comes out orange. I do always try to offer some sort of vegetable and protein when I give them food. I've only ever given my hermit crabs human food. I've never bought any like food made for hermit crabs. I've given them a lot of different things throughout their life, but the staples are usually some sort of protein like meat. Carrots has been the main vegetable. <laughs> for greens, I often give them romaine lettuce. Whenever I have fruit, I give them that as well, which is usually berries. So they seem to have been okay with all the random food that I've given them all these years because they're still happy and healthy and growing big. I have given them dry food too, especially when I had a hamster, I had like dry fruits and vegetables that I gave them and I do give them mealworms when I am out of a protein option because mealworms are mostly protein. I just give them the free dried mealworms that they love to munch on. So the substrate is a mix of play sand and eco earth. I think it's mostly sand and I try to keep it just damp enough to where it is sandcastle consistency. You can um, shape it. This will make it easier for the crabs to burrow down, make their own little cave <laughs> that they can molt in. I have this light up here to give the crabs a normal daylight cycle. It's on a timer so it goes on a certain time of the morning and then off at night. And I have this temperature slash humidity gauge back here, which is pretty self-explanatory. I look at it to make sure the temperature in here is good and the humidity, and I use this sprayer to mist the tank when it isn't humid enough. I used to use cheap spray bottles, but they kept working, so I got myself one of these and it's really nice. It's a pressurized sprayer. And they of course have plenty of stuff to climb on and hide in. And the substrate is either 6 or 7 inches deep. But it's definitely deep enough for the size that my crabs are when it comes to molting. So I think that covers the basic necessities for 
what I've gotten here for the hermit crabs care wise. Oh, except for the shells, which are definitely important. This is their shell area up on these uh, grasses so that the sand stays out of them better. I got some turbo and murex shells here mostly because that seems to be their favorite kinds of shells is turbos and murex. I should probably take this one out because it is quite small and yeah i don't think any of my crabs fit in this anymore pretty sure this was mangoes let's see what mango is in right now which is probably another kind of shell like this but bigger i don't know if he's up here or not does not look like it he's probably hiding as usual the shy crab always been a hermit okay here is mango Oh, he's still so cute. He's my cutest crab, honestly. Don't pinch me, please. He is the smallest, the only boy, and super adorable. I do not handle my crabs very much at all. Well, don't come out of your shell. Stop it. Okay, so here he is. He is in a Murex shell, which is quite a bit larger than this one. Good to know you're growing. Although this does look pretty big for you. <laughs> or maybe it's perfect. They use their biggest claw as the door when they go in their shell. So he probably goes way deep in there before it, his big claw can completely seal it. Gosh, it's been a while since I've actually <laughs> looked at you guys individually. But you're looking good. Oh, please don't pinch me. <laughs> you can be free now. Who can we look at next? These ones up here probably won't calm down. Come on. Aha! I gotcha. <laughs> Who are you? You look like Cupcake. Yes. Hello. Oh my gosh, you. Um, okay, so last update video, you used to have an eye that was smaller than the other the last time. And it looks pretty normal now. And then you also had something on your claw. I don't see anything anymore. You had a good molt. Who are you? Come down from that. This is Coconut. She is, or was, the largest of all the crabs, but they've kind of caught up with her now and she has slowed down with the growing. As they get older, they don't molt as much. She likes to climb. She was always my escape artist, always escaping the old cage, which I guess is one way to know if the cage is too small for them if they keep trying to escape to get out of it and wanting to explore more, climb higher. And when I moved her into this new place, she stopped trying to escape and she hasn't been climbing around as much. So hoping it means that she really likes it in here enough to not try looking for a way out. But yeah, that's Coconut. She's doing well. I'll put you back now. So to get the next one that's hiding up here. All right, so this is Thea. She is very purple, if you can see that. You know, these hermit crabs are also called purple pinchers because their largest claw is purple. She used to be like orangey, the typical color for a hermit crab. One molt, she just came out completely purple, <laughs> which is so pretty. And she likes to stay in this white shell, which really makes it stand out. She's very fast. She likes to get away. Um, I think she's the only crab that's really pinched me. If you can see, she's using her antennas to try to flick me off her back. That's what they do when a hermit crab is, like, crawling on their back. They just flick their antennas back to tell them to get off. So she does not want me to be holding her right now. But yeah, this is Thea. She's really pretty. Her name actually used to be Theo when I didn't know their gender, but this is a girl and I didn't want to change the name too drastically, so I just replaced the O with an A. Alright, I'll let you go now. So it doesn't look like Shelly is back there, which means she really must be underground. Hopefully she's doing well under there. But yeah, that is the four out of the five hermit crabs of mine. Still going strong with living in all, doing well, and loving their habitat, or crabitat as we hermit crab owners call them. Alright, so that's my update on the hermit crabs. I hope you enjoyed and enjoyed seeing them again. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye!